Hello there, welcome to Power GI. It's Graciela on this side of the screen. In today's video, we're going to show you how to use DAX to calculate the vSense hours between two daytime values. I have already loaded my data into Power BI. I have a very simple table with request ID, the time it was created, and the time it was resolved. And in addition, the team member who resolved the issue. I also have a calendar table that has the dates starting 2021 up to the uh, December 31st of 2022. I just added a calculated column showing the date of the week. It's important that you create a calendar table so the solution can work for you. The first thing that we need to do is to evaluate if each of the days in our calendar table is a workday or a weekend. So we're going to add a new column into our calendar table. I'm going to call it, call it workday. And I'm going to use the weekday function to evaluate which is the day of the week or of each of our dates. Now you can see how Sunday and Saturday return values 7 and 1. So we pretty much need to exclude anything that has these two. I'm going to apply a little conditional here just to uh, group weekdays and uh, weekend dates into different groups. So whenever we have value 1 or value 7, what I'm going to do is to assign the value 0 to it. And then for all the other work days, I'm going to just use 1. Then we need to assign what is the start and end times of each of our shifts. So in this case, um, from Monday to Friday, the um, work schedule is from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new column and I'm going to call it start. I'm going to create a variable that will have the workday start time and I'm going to put that to time 8 o'clock. Here, if you have a different starting time, just need to replace it for the time that, that your shift will start. Then I'm going to create an each date. So it's going to be date value of the date that we have in place, which is here. And finally, I'm going to return the date that I just calculated plus the start time. If you have any condition or a specific schedules for each day, you can apply some conditionals in the time so the starting time can change. I'm going to copy all this function and create a new one to indicate what's the end of the shift for each of my days. I'm going to call this column end and my work date ends at 5 p.m. This is everything we need to do for our calendar table. Now let's switch back to the request data table and add a new column. I'm going to call it resolution time in hours. The first thing that we need to do is to create variables to store the values of the created time and the resolved time of a request. This belongs to the two columns that we have here in the left. Then what we want to do is return a sum x and we're going to nest the calculate table function inside the sum x with the calendar table that we just uh, were taking a look at and we are going to include the dates between the start and end date that we just created in row number two and three. And then we just want to return if the workday of the calendar table is equals to one. Re remember that we assigned the value one to anything that belongs to a workday and zero to a weekend. And here we're doing this filter just to include anything that belongs to a workday. And finally, we are going to evaluate the start time of the shift against the start of the request as well as the end time of the shift and the end of the request. Then we're going to return the maximum value between the subtraction of those two values and zero and we're going to multiply it times 24 so we can return hours. Now when I hit enter you see how the calculation is performed for each of the requests excluding any time that doesn't belong to business hours. If I take a look at one specific request, you see how it was submitted at six, around 6.30 a.m. and it was completed at 9.14. So 
if our shift starts at 8 a.m., then we just need to include from 8 a.m. to 9.14, and that returns 1.24 hours. And using this calculation, we can start creating other visualizations and things in our dashboard. Keep in mind that this can also be used in Excel in Power Pivot. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. <music>